first VR headset came out in the 1960s. It was called the Telesphere Mask. It had 3D and stereo sound. You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode 154. My name's Gareth Briley and I am your host. And uh, well, the world's full of there's tomato shortages in Tesco's. We're nearly at the brink of nuclear war, but we've got some lovely people here, our own horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, on my virtual left is Mr. James Burke. How are you doing, James? Hello. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what I was doing. Well, I was like, enthusiastic. I was like rambling. I just took a vitamin. I think I've gone mad. Yeah. Yeah, you took a while remembering your own name. I did. I can. I, know, I, always, go well. <laughs> I always have trouble. Uh-huh. Uh, out of my virtual right is Mr. Neil Watson. How you doing, Neil? Oh, oh hello. Sorry, that's me. Uh, yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. I've got a toothache. I'm all right. And I'm a virtual oh. opposite. It's Mr. Paul Renshaw. How you doing, Paul? Hello there. I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, I've, I've managed to remember who I was today, so anyone, I'm taking it as a win. Has anyone got any tomatoes? Are you going to get any tomatoes from the supermarket? You know, it's funny. The wife, when I got home from work, the wife said, I don't know why everybody's going mental about these tomatoes. We went to Asda and there were loads. Oh, there so you go. Yeah. Obviously, what well, you need to do is come to Nottingham. We've got all the tomatoes you could ever need. Yeah. Are people actually going mental about tomatoes, or is this just... It's all over the news, media. isn't it? Yeah, I know yeah, that. It's but media, people, isn't it? Yeah. Is it like toilet yeah. rolls and, and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, I imagine it will yeah. be. Although, if you get your toilet roll and your tomatoes mixed up, you're in for a world. Of pain. <laughs> no, is, is this why? Um, <laughs> is this why McDonald's have got rid of their big taste of bacon because they haven't got any tomatoes to put inside it? That's I think so. Because they run yeah. out of horses. Okay, right, let's... Uh... <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like oh, you get yeah, McDonald's uh, lawyer uh, on the phone. <laughs> 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 Speaks the vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Um, oh my... James, what have you been doing this week? <laughs> <laughs> he says, getting hold of his yeah, lawyer. James, what have you been doing, James? <laughs> Buying all the twatties, have you? Let's <laughs> 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 start again. What? Hello, Gareth. You can't start again. Well, this is live. Oh, uh, James, what are you doing? Uh, what, what you, what's your week been like? Uh, it's quite hectic hmm. for one reason or another. It's quite boring. Um, but I managed. You, you to like watch... boring, James? Tell us. No, you you can't wait for this. I managed okay. to watch the Korean thriller from last week. Hmm. The film that I was looking forward to called right. Unlocked. Would you like to hear more about it? Yeah. Was that the one yes. with the phone? Yes. Yes. See, I listened to you, James. I, I'm, I'm glad you're here, Paul. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, here's a woman who drops her phone on the bus after a night of heavy drinking. Uh, some guy finds it. and he, Unfortunately, he's got some quite bad intentions. Um, and someone rings the phone while he's got it. And he uses pre-recorded messages of a woman's voice to have a conversation to find out who the phone belongs to. And it really gets dark and sinister. Um, he puts spyware on the phone so you can see through a camera. It, it gets really, really bad. Um, but it's, I do what, it's a fantastic thriller. Um, I, I've never seen a thriller that goes so dark and gets darker and darker bit by bit. It's two hours long, but you just don't know it. It goes by so fast. Um, and it's a bit of a, a warning of the digital age of how easy it is for someone to to find everything about you from your phone. You know, find out all your personal things. Um, so I'd highly recommend it. It's a fantastic film. Unlocked. It's on Netflix. Strangely enough, James, I was walking. I had, to, I had a meeting last night in London town in the centre, yeah. and I was walking past the South Korean embassy, and I got my uh, phone out to take some pictures for you, 
And then oh. security came out, so I had to put it away quite quickly. Did look a bit suspicious. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was gonna. I do this. I'll do. I'll try to get a picture for you. I think you'll love it. It's just how it counts. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, when I'm in. Is it a nice building? It's a lovely building. Really beautiful yeah. building. Yeah. Um, and there's an exhibition of South Korean artists being just launched. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get some stuff for you, James. I'll get some stuff. I'll Created by AI. AI. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Probably, <laughs> probably, isn't it? Um, good, Neil. What about you? What have you been doing? I'm, I can see something on our little list of what we're talking about. I mean, I'm curious. Oh, something. Yeah, I've um, I've been watching something on Netflix called Ooh. Full Swing, which is um, you know, Drive to Survive, which is the the F1 uh, season coverage thing that, that that has made everybody love F1, apart from the people I'm talking to at the moment, probably. Yeah, yeah couldn't care yeah. less. Yeah, apart from you. But anyway, <laughs> F1 went massive because of Drive to Survive on Netflix, and it's the same kind of style for Full Swing, which is um, covering the golf, more specifically PGA Tour, um, and some of the big names in that, some of the some of the smaller players as well. Um, it was a good year for them to follow because uh, anybody that knows anything about golf, Live Golf has come from Saudi, I think it was, Saudi-backed. Um, a load of players split off. They're not allowed to play in the PGA or the Ryder yeah. Cup or anything like that anymore. Um, so it was a really good time for them to start filming and um, yeah, so eight episodes, I think it was, eight or nine episodes, all about 45 minutes long. Really, really good. Um, I can see it doing what Drive to Survive did mm. for F1. It's that good. And, um, yeah. Whether you like golf or not, it's definitely worth a watch. I think, you know, have you watched The Last Dance, which is on Netflix, which is about... No. Um... <sighs> Yeah, the the Jordan stuff. Isn't yeah, it? it's really yeah. good. And I don't, I'm not I'm not a basketball a person, bored. but it does. It's great. It does get you know. And I nothing. I got no. I don't know. I don't watch basketball, but I was completely yeah. into it. Yeah. So it has that similar thing, doesn't it? You don't have to be into it, but you're completely hooked. Yeah. Yeah. There's a tennis one as well called um, oh, oh, called something or other. I don't know. But, but but that's the next one on my list. So I'm going to watch the tennis one next. Okay. Uh, yeah. Full swing. Full swing, can good. I, can I just check? Have I joined the Robin podcast? I thought this was the Xbox Hub one, not the uh, oh, Let's wow. Talk About Sports. It is, and it's uh, Neil watching television as well. Well, we're going to bring it bring it back to games because the Formula One game, Formula Twenty Two, I think Neil might have reviewed is coming out on Game Pass on March six second. So that's good. Is. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's just, thanks, just for Paul. Yeah, just in time for Drive to Survive. Can avoid that as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, Paul, I've just had a look Hello. at your list of what you're going to talk about. Oh my God, God, tell us what you what's going on. <laughs> um, I may have overegged it a bit on the list because I think I put down I've been coming to uh, terms with my own mortality, didn't I? Yeah. Um, basically, what I mean by that is I, I'm getting to the age now where I'm going to have to hand the gaming torch to my son. I think I've been playing a game that I can't talk about um for review and because my son and i share the games on the xbox he was also playing it i got stuck on the first boss and before i had beaten the first boss he had finished the entire game um so yeah i'm now just gonna i think what i might just do in future for my reviews is hand him the controller let him play the game and just watch yeah. And go, oh, yeah, that looks all right. Yeah. So there you go. So I am getting to an age now where I can no longer cut it with the kids. Get, so that, gets, that makes me sad. God knows what them. I'm going to be like when I get to your age. Yeah, it does. It gets worse. You know, Just do 65, I'll be gone. Walking, walking sims. That's what you need to do. I thought you were, I thought you were going to say go to the walking centre. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> tell them and tell them what Gareth. Yeah, Gareth oh, no. sent me. <laughs> My reflexes aren't what they were. Can you me out? <laughs> yeah. Is that why you play so many walking sims in Gareth? Yeah. Just gets me out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what, what am I talking about? Oh, yeah, it's me, isn't it? Sharper. Um, Sharper is a film that came on Apple again. It's a movie that came out, watched it at the weekend. Mm. It stars, uh, um, I forgot his name, Bucky from Marvel. Who's that, James? What's the name of the actor? 
He plays oh, uh, um, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, yeah, him. Um, he's oh, very good. Um, I don't know his name either. Don't worry. No, Julian yeah. Julian Moore's in it, um, and it's a noir film. Really, it's a modern day sort of film noir, and it's like it's one of those movies that you watch it and go, I haven't seen a film like this for ages. You know, like um, when it just has multiple twists. There's always people trying to get out of each other, and it's like, who's who's doing the con? That's all it's, it's about. Two people, two people doing a con all the time. I don't want to say much yeah. about it, but it's about that kind of list. You about those things about there's a con, then there's a con, there's another con. There's a great film um, of it was in the seventies, like um, what's that great film with Paul Newman and Robert Redford? The that's the soundtrack. Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. No, the other one. That, that sounds it's like the theme tune to um, the snooker. Pop Black. In the 1980s. Yeah, it was. It was both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Pop, <laughs> Pop Black. <laughs> oh, I used to love Pop Black. Yeah. It's just like that. It's a film like Pop Black. Yeah. Um, what's the name of that film? Oh, it doesn't matter. But it's a good, um, it's a really good film noir. Lots of twists and turns. It's quite old fashioned, but in a modern day setting. And um, everyone's great. Really enjoyed it. So if you fancy something, a bit different. It's Sebastian Stamp. Oh, that's it. Yeah. He's very good. And that tennis. Netflix thing is great point. Ah, that's movie. the one. Yeah, yeah. Have you watched that, James? I uh, no, not yet. But it didn't look no. quite interesting. Yeah. Can I can no. I recommend something on Netflix or Amazon Prime, possibly? Um, if yeah. you are into your sport, what you want to do is have a look out for uh, the fishing programs that Bob Nudd made. They're <laughs> properly good. Jeez. That's what you want right. to be watching out for. You mean the Bob, Bob Nudd? The Bob Nudd. <laughs> Bob Nudd's right angle is absolute classic television. I can't think of anything worse. Going fishing would be bad, but watching fishing is, is, is Listen, even... You, it, it, you're, you're a oh, vegetarian. On, you don't you get are, a say in oh, this. Uh, <laughs> the Sting. The Sting is the film I was thinking of. Robert Redford and Paul Newman. The Sting. Um, the Sting. Yeah. And this is like um, this is like it's like being old people's home. We're just remembering oh, things yeah. halfway through. Do you remember right? when, yeah. when, yeah. when, when we went fishing? Yeah. Remember when, when, uh, <laughs> right. remember when Starbursts were called Opal Fruits? <laughs> <laughs> um great. Let's let's get into games. Let's go. We're gonna, we're gonna... Yeah, yeah, let's get onto games really quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we're gonna start with Neil because we we've got an expert here, like we always have experts every year. And Neil has got, as you might have heard last week, the new PSVR two. He's been playing on it. Neil, over to you. First of all, let's talk about Hello. What it's like. What, it's a what bit would you like to know? I want to know about the kit first of all. How does it feel? How does it work? Tell us all about that first before you tell it feels. Uh, in terms of hardware, I've gone. F- I've I've never used. Um, well, I did use PS PSVR the first one, but very very briefly. Um, so I couldn't say whether it's good or not. I've used Oculus or MetaQuest Two, whatever it's called nowadays. Um, didn't really get on with it, but now I've gone to PSVR Two. In terms of hardware, it's very impressive. Um, quite big, quite bulky. If I'm being honest. Um, the headset, but it fits really nicely. Um, I wear glasses all the time. I can wear glasses underneath it. That is a, a good positive, obviously. Mm. Um, visor moves in and out nicely. Titans nicely. Earphones connected nicely. Cable connects to the PS5 like a pain in the ass. I don't understand why that's there. Um, but hardware-wise, really, really impressive. And the controllers? Because these are new, aren't they? Um, well, they're new to me, yeah, because I never really use PSVR. <laughs> but um, no, they feel good as well. Um, yeah, I've got. There's, there's no negatives about it, really. Um, yeah, I can't think of it apart from possibly it's a little bit too bulky. Okay, but a good bit of kit seems to work. And so, what have you been good playing? Good bit, good bit, good bit of kit yeah. that works perfectly. Setup right. was a breeze. I mean, plug it in. It's set up. Um, the only thing I needed to do, which I was slightly disappointed by, was the controllers out of the box were pretty much dead. So they needed a charge. Oh, yeah, I've heard this. They need controllers um, every two hours. Yeah. Well, I, no, I, well, I don't know. I haven't played for two hours yet. You'll find out soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, just out of the box, I, w- I would have thought that Sony would have been able to put some decent charge in these, these controllers, whether they've been sitting in a box for the last six months or so. I don't know. 
Um, but that's a little bit disappointing. Mm. Yeah. Right, games, Neil. Tell us about the games. Um, games. Yeah, what have you played? Of games. Um, <laughs> the one that I was bothered by, the one that is it a system seller? I can't say it's a system seller, can I? But I did buy it to play this game, so possibly it is. Um, is the kayaking game, mm-hmm. which I don't know what it's called. Kayak, is it? Maybe VR kayak. Yeah. Kayak VR. Kayak VR Mirage, I think. Something like that. I'm going to go out on the limb before you start. I don't think it's a system seller. I'm just going to say that now. <laughs> well, uh, but you for that, you... You say that. Yeah, yeah I, I paid £530 to play this game, so it's, uh, it's a system seller. <laughs> yeah, good. Yes, yeah, for you. Yeah. Did, you, did you have to buy the game separately? Yeah. So you paid 530 quid and then for the game as well? The game's only £16, hmm. but then... <laughs> It's, it's kayaking game, isn't it? So it's not a triple A kind of uh, horizon type thing. Um, but no, nice game. Um, makes you feel sick after about five minutes. So it does the job of VR. Uh, and yeah, you can race. You can just wander around on a little tour. So that's quite nice, actually. There's a an option. There's, there's different um, kind of routes and different pathways you can go along on, the, on your little kayak. And one of the options is tour. And it, it takes all the hard work out of it so you don't have to paddle. And it just kind of glides you around nicely so you can look around. And I have to say, it looks visually stunning. Absolutely stunning. Oh. oh a proper step up from what I was used to with Oculus. Right. MetaQuest, sorry. Um, it was one of those... I, I kind of got in, put the headset on, and it, it froze you into a swimming pool. Of, of all places in this kayak so you can kind of learn how to control it and i just sat there open mouth for oh <laughs> this is a bit good and this it was just a swimming pool <laughs> and then you go out into the open and you kind of go to australia and places like that and you're seeing the fish swimming around you've got the water water looks amazing um but the whole thing just looks stunning so yeah so i've been playing that good anything else no no, fair enough. I've downloaded the trial for um, the big system seller that should be the system seller, um, Horizon Call of the Mountain. Yeah. I haven't played it yet. It only turned up yesterday, so you've got to give me some credit there. Yeah. Um, but that looks all right. I've also downloaded a little jigsaw game, which I think looks really cool, called uh, Puzzling Places. Um, I might actually buy that because it's pretty cheap. I don't know if that was on... The first VR, possibly. Right. Maybe. I, I don't know. Um, and there's a drumming game called Drums Rock that looks, looks brilliant fun. So I'm going to buy that. Uh, I think yeah. one of the things that people, I think I saw something today because everyone, because with the old PSVR, it came with some sort of demos. It came in with a game built into it, I think, first of all. So you, this time you haven't got it, but in the PlayStation Store, they haven't made it far off, so there are demos, aren't there, of some of the games? The, the trials, yeah. So yeah, I've downloaded trials. the trial for Horizon, the trial for Puzzling Places. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, so that's Which good. is good, which yeah. I think you need for, especially for VR. Um, I have to say, I don't know when I last played a demo or a trial of an Xbox game. Mm. Possibly, possibly not this, this side of the last 15 years, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. I, if I want to play a game, I know I'm going to like that game. I'm, I'm quite kind of setting my way to that. And so I'll buy it. I don't bother with a demo. But for VR, I think a trial is pretty much essential. So it's money well spent. Uh, for kayaking <laughs> alone, yeah. 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 But I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with it. Okay. Um, the only issue is the old uh, nausea stuff like that but that's the case with a lot of it did that, did honest, that, sorry did that go after a while or was it it's always um, there in in regards to the kayaking game it comes on if you go really fast yeah so you, you're putting all your effort in and you, you're doing your your oaring is that what it's called oaring yeah I don't, I don't paddling. Know, paddling 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 paul knows he's a fisherman he does paddling all the time <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah fish and, in the um, kayak. yeah <laughs> And uh, yeah, so when you're going around nicely and nice and slowly, you could do that forever, I think. But you put a bit of speed into it, and there's there's race option in in the kayaking. 
Um, and then you, you can start feeling it because that, as you lean, the boat leans with you and then you're putting the oar into the water and spinning it. So, yeah, it, it's an issue. Um, Gemma found it a, more of an issue than me, which right. I was amazed by because I can't go on roller coasters or anything like that anymore. Right. Um, and even Zena, my, my daughter, she felt it as well. Right. for a 14 year old to feel it a little bit weird um but i'd like to see how it goes with the other games like the <laughs> jigsaw puzzle you're not going to feel sick <laughs> what about game. um the racing game gt7 yeah yeah <laughs> that's gonna be uh if you're feeling sick on a kayak i'm i'm gonna give it a go i'm, yeah. I'm gonna have to buy the physical copy of of gt7 i think because i refuse even though i'm digital only normally i refuse to give Sony my money for a gran turismo game when i can be playing forza mm. um but i'd like to give that one a go yeah I, I like the idea of again it was a game i've put so many hours into no man's sky because they've got that yes. and i thought that would be pretty amazing just to be on that on these different planets and looking around that would be i, I would that would be good. i think i get the i'll get the nausea quite badly as well so it's it's, Maybe it's an age thing. Yeah, I think I just can do it. Possibly. I don't want to pay something and then to make me feel ill. Well, that's why these trials are essential. Yeah. You, they have to. I think they've got a trial for everything. Right. I think. Um, which is a good call. They have to do that. Because, yeah, you're not going to go and lump a load of money out for something that you can't actually play. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. so, can I just, just check this? You say you have to have it plugged in with a cable. Yeah. Does that not get in the way when you're trying to do all this it's, VR stuff? It's a very long cable. Give them the juice. They put a decently long cable on there. Um, it's got to be three metres long, maybe. So, uh, and no, it, I haven't found it getting in the way at all yet, which I'm even very Even when you were paddling? By. Even when I was paddling. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and I, like even when I was paddling. I, I, yeah, I thought it would do as well. Um, but no, not at all. And it's the one thing that I don't really understand. Like, again, I'll go back to it. I had the Oculus that was totally wireless. Um, so why now, what, three, three years later, four years after that, are they still having to cable it in? I don't know. Did, did the old PSVR have a cable? I think it did, didn't it, Gareth? I think so, yeah. I think it mm. did, yeah. Um but, yeah. but then it, but then you don't have to worry about charging the headset, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. You just have to worry about charging each of the controllers. I think it needs a big game for me to to think. Cause I was tempted. Bigger than kayak. A bit bigger than kayak. I think I'd like. I'd love that if that Half Life game came onto it. Oh, uh, Alex. That, yeah, Alex. that would get me. That might get me going. And it's going to be a cool one, but. A big walking sim. Or a big walking sim. Yeah. Big walking sim. Or a big kind of like um, a Marble Madness type game. That's what I want to play. Yeah. I, I like I like marble games in VR. Yeah. yeah. Or puzzling games. Yeah. Uh, they got tes um, te tes Tetris Effect connected. Oh, yeah. That's not too good. I yeah, that's not too very good. Yeah. I've heard some people really enjoy that. Well, brilliant, Neil. So, but, um, I've got one question. Oh, yeah. Carry on, James. Sorry. How much are you selling it for? <laughs> How much am I selling it for? Yeah. I, I, I haven't looked on eBay, but they've got to be going for at least a grand, surely. <laughs> I cash in now. You can get one. There. There's, no, there's no shortage of them, are there? I mean, they keep sending me emails all the time going, come and get it. It's not like the PlayStation yeah, 5, is it? But like like we said the other day, it's that price is it's mad. Yeah, it's mad. It's You're mad. paying yeah. more than a console. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, and like you say, they do probably need a proper system seller. Mm -hmm. um, you'd think Horizon, Call of the Mountain would be, and it's bundled as well, isn't it, with, with certain ones. Mm. Uh, but I don't know if that's, that is that. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. But, but no, buy it for kayaking. That's all you need. Yeah. Mm. Paul, you convinced? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> I'm not convinced about VR in general, and I'm really not convinced about the uh, PS VR 2. 
So no, I, I think I'm with you, Paul. I, I, I think my problem, is, and Neil, I can understand it, and it's about we're talking maybe a little bit about the future of what gaming is going to be. But I think the issue I have, and it's because I'm always working when I'm playing games, or I'm on the phones or doing bits of other bobs. It's that thing of being immersed in something completely. And in the living but, room, but and also I like the idea. I like having a controller and then having other access to other things as well, or being social in the environment. If, you, if it's not, I'm not closed off. That's my only thing with it. No, you, you can still be social. Um, you've got the headphones which connect the the earbuds, sorry, that connect to the VR headset, and you can put those in. But you don't need them in because you just stick the television on, and whoever you're with is watching what you're seeing on the telly, yeah. and you're kind of chatting away with them. Right. Um, so it. I think it's quite social, to be honest. It's not like uh, the old VR stereotype of sitting in a corner, not not leaving your room, not eating or drinking for 48 hours or whatever. Um, yeah. I, I'm guessing some people probably would. But but for me, I think it's kind of more of a, a quick hit. Yes. Um, 20, 30 minutes at a time, bang, 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 have a few, have a bit of fun there, then go and play a proper game on your Xbox. Yeah, it's a party thing, isn't it? That's what you're saying. It's a party thing. It's like a, it's a thing to show people when you come around. You've got to have a go at this. Yeah, but I wouldn't it's want a gimmick. Um... <laughs> it, it is a gimmick, James. Yes, <laughs> but it's also it's... the future. Right. <laughs> it's it's not. No, it's not. I th- I think this year will be a big VR year. I know I said this on here before. They've, they've been saying that for years. The VR people. Mm-hmm. Don't join them, Neil. Step away. Yeah, but but it's very clever. It's very impressive. Mm. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Good. But but uh, anyway, ask me whether Xbox need a VR headset. Do Xbox need a VR headset? No, they don't. No. Okay. No. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> it, it's like, the gimmick, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. If, if they had one, I'd use it. But then I was like the only person in the world that used Connect. And I really like to connect. I, I use Connect. I was Did really you? impressed with it, yeah. Me and Paul like are the only connect. people in the world that use Connect. Yeah. I was forever talking to me Xbox. My dad thought I'd lost my marbles when I took it up to his house and uh, plugged it in. And he was, I was like, uh, Xbox, go to settings. And he was like, what are you doing? I was mm-hmm. like, talking to the Xbox. <laughs> but I was, yeah. So I used to like Connect. There you go. Um, great. Thank you, Neil. Let's go about other games. Maybe just two. Well, oh, Neil's done one already. Um, Paul, what's your what's your game you've been playing? You want to talk about my game that I've been playing that I want to talk about is a little one called Dog Urai, which is a dog who is a samurai. Wow. And I don't. Obviously, you're old enough to remember this, Gareth. But do you remember back in the day on the old original Game Boy, you used to get like platform action games well those days have come again you can now emulate a game boy on your 500 quid uber console um and it's it's all right i mean it's very 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 retro um and it it does an annoying thing where every level that you go into has a slightly different color palette, but the character that you play as is basically just an outline. So on some screens, he's really hard to see. Um, And it's just, it's a bit of a step too far with this whole retro thing that's been going on for a long while now. I'd like to play a proper game, I think. I want to see a game that's made for the Series X, not that was made for the Game Boy in about mm. 1980. Yeah. You know there have been quite a few of those. What? Real <laughs> games? <laughs> no, games that have been made for the Series X. No, I, I don't believe you, because I don't get to see them. Oh. All you, I get is bloody retro-style platformers. He says this. He's reviewed Dead Space. He's reviewing another yep. huge game at the moment. That yep. is that. In, in Only in this year. He complains like yeah. this. He goes, he's, yeah. We're not even out of February yet. No. 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 Jesus Christ. No, we're not even out of February yet, and I've reviewed one game that was made this century. And that, that was a remake of a Rem- game from 2007. You've got something else Fantastic. Now. We can talk about next week. We can't talk about Listen. now. Um, <laughs> James, have you got anything better? Of course you haven't. Go on. Uh, I'm Bumblebee. Ooh. Did you hear about it? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. 
It's called Bumblebee <laughs> Little Bee Adventure. And it's from FX R Games. So it's the guys that do Airy and Life of Fly. Um, oh, yeah. And this is a... It's <laughs> like it. Gareth doesn't know who they are. They, they, <laughs> they put out um, about 25 dozen of them in the last year. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is pretty much in the same vein. It's a 3D flying exploration adventure. But you're a little bumblebee instead of a bird or a fly. Um, and you have to go around collecting, I think they're called knowledge shards. Yeah. And that will show you the way to the end of the level. Um, there's around 30 to 50 shards in each level. And you've got to guide the fly. Sorry, not a fly. It's a bee. Um, you've got to guide the bee through them at the most painstakingly slow <laughs> pace you've ever known. Um, you've got a, a speed boost in it, but it runs out. So you have to go around and collect oh. potions to, to get it back. So it's a little bit counterproductive. I, mean, I, um, I would have loved a speed boost in one of the, all those other uh, games. You, you won't when you've got to try and go out of your way to find the potions, uh-huh. which just makes the game even longer. Um, there's 10 levels. And some of them actually feel very familiar to areas that you've been in in that like area. Like there's one, it's like a, a school classroom. I think I remember it from Dreamscape. Mm. Um, and then there's a town that looks the same. Everything is either really good or really bad, though, in terms of the environments. Some are too bright, so you can't even see where the, the shards are. And then the others are really dark, so you can see where the shards are, but you can't really see the environment. Mm. Um, so it's quite poorly um, performance-wise, anyway. Um, I'm not really enjoying it, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> you know this. Um, I, I think it's just too much of being another area, but without the fantastical settings. It's too <laughs> grand. Um, and it's just, not, it's just not all it's cracked up to be. No. To be honest. They're amazing, that company, because they do just produce, it's the same you know, was Life of Fly or Aerie or this, it's the same, yeah. it's the same thing Absolutely really. Absolutely mad, isn't it? And it's the same, yeah, it's, it's the same mechanic. So they use the same mechanic yeah. and they just put it, and I some, the and some, yeah, a lot of the same assets, yeah. So, and it's very popular, people love them. You know, they do really well on Steam, they do pretty good on the Xbox, so it's like, you make some a lot of money, I think. Yeah. I quite like an Aerie game. Yeah, just to kind of sit back, you know, yeah. for half an hour, just fly around. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard when you review the eighth one. Thank God Dave's doing a few of them now. <laughs> well, James is now on Bumblebee. Uh, this yeah, is the first one. So yeah. next week there'll be Bumblebee 2, more. and then like a few yeah. weeks after that, Bumblebee 3. Yeah. Yeah. It, this Bumblebee is retiring. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> um, right, it's me. Let's talk about Atomic Heart. Now, Darren's reviewing this for us, um, and it should be out soon. Um but I've done about three hours on Atomic Heart. came out on Tuesday on Game Pass. It's been really mixed reviews from nines and down to fours. And um, it's we were talking about this when we on the other night. We were thinking of talking about maybe it's about the content because it's the whole story is set in a kind of reimagined post-war Soviet Union, um, which where the Soviet Union have developed this amazing kind of technology so it has a very kind of bioshocky world where where it's like it's um cities in the clouds where you start and these and the robots are are kind of like serving everything really and you can have augmentations in you that make you do certain things like you know to freeze enemies and all that stuff so it has that bioshock kind of roots and and um you can get things like you can scan the rooms and stuff like this but of course the robots um turn quite instantly on the humankind, and that's where you are really at the beginning. After a kind of long, sort of forty-minute introduction to the world, the robots are against you, and it's your way of trying to get through this world. Um, I think the the place and the world and the detail is is really really good. It's really enjoyable. It has it makes me think about definitely the Bioshock world, and it's a really almost have that triple A quality of you know wow, it's a great world you're you're travelling through. Um, the content, the detail, and the kind of reimagined history is really good. 
The problem they have, I think, and I think this is, I've had this as a few, I've had this as forespoken, a little bit with the Dead Space remake, a little bit, is, is the main character. The main character is an asshole in this. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> they've written this guy, who's this actor who's playing, I can't remember the actor, but it's like, oh, shut up, man. He's just, he's always white. It's like he's written, been written for a 14 year old boy. And the rest of the world is kind of more nuanced and more interesting. But it's a 14-year-old boy speaking stuff like, you know, always doing smart comments at every moment. And it's annoying. And the same I had with Forspoken. The problem with the thing with the, with the main character was the, the way the, it was written. It was just too much. And I think with Dead Space, it's interesting they've given Isaac the, which I finished this week, is that they've given him a... Um, a voice, haven't they? And they, he responds. In Dead Space, he doesn't respond that much, so you're thinking, why are they even bothered with him? It's like, it doesn't just keep him silent. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, he only said about eight lines, about the whole thing. Um, but he said the whole thing about a main character, guy giving them, you've got to do it really well. You've got to make that main character really interesting. And there's loads of interesting characters from Lara Croft, Nathan Drake. You know, you've got to put the work in there. And sort of just doing smart-ass comments and like an 80s action movie star just doesn't work and it ruins the rest of the world for me but saying that the rest of the game is really good it's really the action's great um it's it's really fun exploring it um it's quite it's very hard um so it's yeah it, i'm really enjoying it but i've only done two or three hours and darren will do a, a full review but yeah that's my only criticism but yeah good it's on game pass it's worth a go anyone going to play it here Oh, I downloaded okay. it last night. Actually. Yeah, I think you have fun um, with it, Paul. Yeah, I think I'll give it a try. Yeah. If I can ever get to a point where, uh, you know, I'm playing games for fun. Yeah, good. Don't I told you before, Paul, you can't play for fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the rules. <laughs> it's not no, the I'm rules. Go, I'm going to play it as well. I'll play it through Game Pass. Yeah. Um, at some point. I liked Bioshock. Um, all the Bioshocks. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm quite interested. But I'm not I'm not rushing out to buy it. Um I've got a kayaking to do, haven't I? Yeah, so. you have. Yeah. 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 I don't have to listen to anybody talking kayaking either. Well, there you go. That's a good thing. You just have to be sick all down yourself. Um, <laughs> should, should we do another <laughs> game? Should we do one more game each? Neil, what have you got? What's your other one? Um, I've been playing um, Akka R, A K K A A R R H, um, from Atari. Um, I'll read the press blurb because that's the easiest way of describing it, really, because it just sums it up. A frenzied kaleidoscope of neon insanity, Aka R is one of the rarest games of the 80s gaming era, but brings back the nostalgic arcade experience with a vengeance. Um, it's, it's from Atari and Jeff Minter. Remember Jeff Minter from back in the day? God, he in was the Llama Man, wasn't he? The 80s is the Llama Man. He made uh, Tempest as well and, mm. and all that lot. Um, basically... You're a ship in the middle of the the screen, and you can spin round on your axis, and you fire a single shot. The idea is for that shot to destroy something, which then creates a ripple effect to destroy something else and something else and something else and something else. Um, so you fire one shot, you make a combo as as big as you can, uh, and you score points. It's absolutely flipping manic. It's mad. It's got all the all the colours from the eighties that you would have on your, your Spectrum or your C sixty four or something like that. Um and they're just all thrown at your eyes at once. And I sat there and again I'll go back to it. I'd rather be playing kayaking for half an hour at speed. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it just it's so intense. It, it's crazy. Um but it's still quite addictive. Um mm. Atari are on a, a bit of a roll with their Recharge series where they've taken like, Centipede and Missile Command and all that lot, recharged and bring them up to the um, modern era. This one isn't recharged. It's it, it sold as a, a lost prototype, so it never actually released back in the 80s. Um, and now they're just releasing it now. And I'm not really sure whether they should have or not. Perhaps they should have st- stuck with the uh, the recharge scheme, but it's 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 all right. It's just a bit a bit chaotic, really. Mm. It's just mad, um, but it, it's decent fun. Okay, good. 
Thank you, Neil. Um, any questions for, for that before we move on? Uh, no, I think he described it beautifully. Beautifully, Paul. Beautifully. Well, the press did, didn't it? Yeah, it's really it did yeah. all right. Yeah. Um, Paul, can you describe your next one beautifully? Uh, possibly. I'm going to uh, make a change to the advertised content. Oh, God. Um, and I'm going to talk about Shadow Slightly Warrior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shadow Warrior 3 <laughs> Definitive Edition. Ah. What a game. Yeah. Which is, as Neil says, what a game. Um, it's the first... I never played um, Dying Light before anybody starts shouting at the podcast, but it's the first game I've played where it does parkour and free running and stuff and makes it work in a first-person perspective. It's really, really good. The action is crazy. Low Wang is as mental as ever um and it's stuffed full of more demons to shoot than you can shake a katana at and whether you want to slice them up or shoot them or whatever the the action in it is absolutely non-stop it's completely crazy um so yeah the definitive edition adds in a few extra things it gives you extra difficulty levels and it adds in a kind of horde mode survival mode level type things um but other than that i never played it when it first came out so i've waited for this edition and it's absolutely brilliant i've loved every minute of it well good good so there you go yes yeah. if you've never played shadow warrior 3 play it on game pass now okay good oh, it's on game pass as well isn't it it's on yeah. game pass now yeah. yeah yeah i reviewed the um the base game when it came out this time last year was it maybe it was Something about like that. that yeah yeah i think i gave it four and a half out of five um something like that but i thought it was one of the best games i played of last year mm. i was really surprised by it it was that good mm -hmm. okay I, I was very surprised it was it, it the the action and the pace of the thing is just brilliant good james will you be playing that um no just too much, too oh, much okay. swearing for James. It's <laughs> eighteen rated. D D like the first one, it's a bit hectic. Yeah, it's quite hectic. Isn't it? <laughs> this one really does. It's very it's hectic. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's lots of swearing too. What's your Jake? What's your next game, James? Christ! Oh, it's doing this sword and fairy. <laughs> oh, okay, it's, it's a bit too in depth. Um, <laughs> what we'll tell we go. It's sword and fairy. Yeah, together forever. Oh. It's um, what is it? It's a game. It's the, uh, it's the game. You made this up. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the tenth installment of an RPG series, um, and it's a mixture of like ancient mythology and action, uh, Chinese mythology, I should say. And basically, it's a a war between humans, deities, and demons. And you control a deity called Zhu Wu and a human called Yu Kling Shu. And to fight those beasts. <laughs> Don't put me off for. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's not RPG. You fight those beasts. It's got great cutscenes and it's got a, a really in depth story to it. But the translation. From Chinese isn't great, so you've got to piece it together yourself a little bit and guess what they mean. Um, but yeah, it's a really action packed, interesting, and beautiful RPG. I mean, the scenery, some of the scenery is like Destiny 2. You know, when you look out and go, Wow, I've been mean, standing there and I'm looking at it for ages. Mm. It's like that, it's stunning. Um, but then they mess it up a little bit with popping textures and, you know, anything up close. You've got to wait for it to pop up. Um, once it's there, it looks great. And it's actually, really, I'd say it's a really good RPG. Chinese mythology. Check it out. Are you reviewing it? Right? I did review it. What, yeah. have you, what have you given it? I gave it a four. Oh. I gave yeah. it just translations. And the uh, performance issues behind it, like 
Okay. That was it. All right. Good. Mm. Any questions? No. Did, did you say it was the tenth in the series? I think it is. Yeah. It, I've, I've, I've been seen. released over here before because I've, I've, it's not one I'm aware of. And obviously, uh, I like no, an RPG. Definitely not an Xbox. Um, I think PlayStation had a couple. But yeah, it's it's not very well known, but it is really good. I really would recommend having a look at that, Paul. Is it, it coming out great. on is it gonna come out on the PSVR two for Neil? I no. Oh. Probably not. Um okay. it's too high end for that. Oh really? Okay. Um I'll I think be it fine. Might come to Game Pass soon. Oh, that'll oh, be good. Then. good. I think. I'll have a look at that, yeah. I'll double check. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's Game Pass. Excellent. Um, I'm going to talk about my last game really quickly because I've done a let's play of it, which will help you get an understanding of it more. If you can... Oh, I do hope it's the game that, that you're going to talk about. It's, Please uh, talk about it. It's Remoteness. <laughs> oh, uh, it's the game. <laughs> it's Remoteness is a game that came from... What did they do before? What's the game I reviewed? Uh, Another they? Dawn. Another Dawn, which is... The I think it's called KR Games. It wasn't a great Not game. Not calling them out or anything, no, it wasn't but that's a great what they're game. called. That's their name, just letting them know. Um, <laughs> remoteness. Is it good? It's. Uh, I'm. I'm not finished to reviewing it yet, so I, I'm sure we need to play it. Um, <laughs> that was very diplomatic. You basically start the game, um, and the idea is there's been an alien invasion in the city. Yeah, and then you you sort of wake up in your apartment, and then you go out and you see there's no one there really apart from aliens and some police who want to kill you for some reason. <laughs> Don't understand why, and uh, there. And then, and then you, it's a first person thing. And then you look at your objectives, and they say things like, "Just go out into the city. There's been an alien invasion," which really isn't an objective. It's like just telling what's happened. You go, okay. And the other one is get get some math and medicine. <laughs> right? Where do I get that from? Um, and I remember someone saying about a metro, but it's not in the objective, so that's kind of mixed up. You go out, you grab a gun. There's a gun lying around an alleyway for some reason. You can pick this gun up so you can shoot and you can um, punch. Um, but the moment I... And this is maybe why I need to give it some fair go. It might be something I'm doing. But the moment you die, I lose that gun for some reason. <laughs> you can't get it back. So then you're knackered, really, without it. Because if the aliens come, they just kill you. They punch you. know, You're trying to punch an alien. It's quite funny for a bit, but you're dead. And for some reason, the police are trying to kill you as well. I don't know, I understand why. There's no context of anything. That's it. The information I'm giving you is the information you know. That's it. Don't know why these aliens are. You don't know why the police are there. You don't know what really you're doing. But the city is quite big. It's like a, based on New York. Um, and I, I, I mean, I like that. I like the sort of sometimes they're not hand-holding. I'm reviewing someone else that has that. And it's you're just finding bits of story as you go along. But, oh, it's tough. It's a tough go. It's a... Uh, it looks looks really old school, you know. You know how I love looking at city in through windows and going, "That's nice." Mm. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to look at here. <laughs> but we've heard all about you peeping in windows. Yeah, but you'll get an idea. We we maybe put a link to it, Neil, or in the thing and the notes. Maybe, yeah, 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 we'll but, chuck the link to the let's yeah, play. But have a little let's um, play. I did a forty-five minute let's myself. play. It's um, yeah. I'll put the link to the let's play of another door in there as well because that is still to this day. The funniest Let's Play I've ever watched on YouTube. Yeah, it was. Mm. Yeah, it's really. Um, yeah, but this is better than, and I think this is better than another game. And there's some really, there's some bit. I'm, I'm always hate talking about games that are not really, but it's just, yeah, it's hard going. But I still need to give some more of it. It just doesn't. It's hard. It's to, hard. To, to be fair, you gave another Dawn one out of five, so it's gonna yeah. struggle to get much worse. Than yeah, that, it's not that. definitely not a one out of five. Uh, he, says. he says but yeah there you go remoteness bless them um, can I just confirm <laughs> yeah Sword and Fairy is on Game Pass July the 6th oh excellent oh. Um, what, why have they confirmed it's on Game Pass on July the 6th what's going on there I don't know that's so a bit that weird last week it got confirmed I just found the news piece now that's, that's very strange isn't it mmm yeah, July the 6th, it's on Xbox, Play Anywhere, PC, and Xbox. Oh, that's good. We'll give that a go. You should do. Um, 
so a couple of games announcements coming out. Um, Forza Horizon Five um, has got a new expansion, coming which is yep. <laughs> it's coming out. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, Rally Adventure. What tell us about you coming? We've got some Forza people here. What's this? Is it just is it look good? Are you excited by this? Did you know it's coming? March, the end did of March. Watch, did it? you watch it, Neil? Oh, no, I haven't seen it yet. No, no. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I'll have a go then, shall I? I want it to be a surprise. Oh, well, I'll not say anything then in that case. <laughs> no, no, you can tell everybody. It's fine. Oh, okay. Just, cool. I'm, you I'm, just don't listen. Yeah. I'm blocking my ears off right now. <laughs> put your BS, <laughs> put your PSVR thing on. Um, <laughs> Basically, the new expansion for Forza Horizon 5 has been announced and it's going to be, drumroll please, just like the expansion for the first game, which is going to be a rally expansion. Um, It promises all kinds of new terrain to have a go at. It gives you a co-driver. It gives you a load of cars, including Colin McRae, Colin McRae's classic Focus that I saw in the uh, presentation. Um, so, yeah, it looks very promising. I mean, the, the off-road racing in Forza Horizon 5 anyway is great, mainly because there's no windows for Gareth to slow down and look in. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, with the new rally stuff, it's a whole new area. It's... Uh, Slightly to the north of where the map is, it's called Sierra Nuevo, I think. Um, and yeah, it looks very promising. There's all sorts of new cars and stuff to do. Helicopters flying around and doing all the chase car photography stuff. Um, it looks very promising. And you have to pay for this, don't you? It's not free on Game Pass, this stuff. It's... It's, it's not free on Game Pass. It's free with the expansion pass, I think they called right. it. Okay. Um, so if you bought that, you'll get that for now. But otherwise, you'll have to pay for it. Yeah. Good. Good. And when's it coming for? Uh, March twenty ninth. I want to say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not yeah. for them. Yeah. Let's hope it's better than Hot Wheels. I didn't like Hot Wheels. There you go. Hot Wheels was all right, but it was very. A bit silly. It was yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want it, silly. We want I mean, serious racing. It's like basing an entire game on Hot Wheels. I mean, nobody would do that, would they? Yeah, well, they did, and it didn't work very well. Well, yeah, that's on Game Pass too. Mm. And it's not very good. Okay. <laughs> um, good. But anyway, um, well, that'll keep you too quiet for a while in April. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Good. What else have we got? Oh, yeah, there's Life of Pi that's coming out. You know, Life of Pi, the Xbox, the Pinocchio, Dark Soulsy type game. Yeah, that's got an August release date, if I remember rightly. So it just said long way away, August. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's going to get delayed again. That's the other. <laughs> that's the other side of Starfield and Redfall. <laughs> yeah, uh, good. Uh, I did do a list. I'm not going to do it now. Doing most time, but I will do that maybe next oh. time. No, I know. Um, There's loads of time. Guys. There is enough time. Poor James has got to go. I've got to go. Uh, it's just, you know, things to do. <laughs> Every me to it. Yeah, you've got no to dedication. To people. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about. Um, it's just a really interesting thing before we go. Is like the um, Microsoft president. This whole ridiculous thing was called a duty. That's going on forever. Mm. It feels like I'm in a sort of like murder case or something. Just following it, going on forever and ever on trial. Um, he's talked about the sort of 10 year agreement with, I don't understand, I don't care anymore about Call of Duty being on Nintendo or something for 10 years. It's just like, God. But he would say, we might, he just sort of said, I, he can't imagine that maybe in 10 years, he can't imagine what would happen in 10 years. He can't imagine him being there. But he was saying about this idea of like, will there be consoles in 10 years? What would we be playing? Will it be something else like Neil was talking about? Will it be VR? Do you think there is, this is a question to all do you think there is a, do you think consoles will have a moment of just disappearing? There'll be something else, or will it just be cloud gaming, or will it be VR? Will it, can you imagine them going, we don't buy a bit of hardware every four or five years? No. No? no. You think you no, all I think, think, I think consoles? I think it's going to stay as it is. If there's been consoles now for, what, 20, 30 years? Yeah, but the technology hasn't been there before, Paul. Yeah, but, you know... I'd, I'd rather have something sat under my telly that I can play on if my internet goes out um, than be completely cut off from everything. So, yeah, I mean, cloud gaming's great. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love sitting in the office on my lunchtime playing on the uh, cloud, doing the Game Pass stuff. But internet is is still a bit flaky for me. 
So maybe in 10 years it'll be super reliable and we'll all be plugged straight in, but you never know. Uh, I I think there's still going to be consoles. What about you, Neil? Um, I'd like there still to be proper hardware and a proper console. I can't ever see it being the size of a, a PlayStation 5, for instance. That's just mad as it is. Um, but I can see it just being a little USB stick or something like that that you just stick into the back of your telly and go from there and everything will be on that. Um, there's a place for cloud gaming. Like Paul says, it's it's good. I I use it fairly regular. Um, but it's not a substitute for the proper proper thing. Um, but again, 10 years time, Christ. <laughs> no idea what's going to happen. No idea. What about you, James? You said you're firm no on it on the console. You think there's going to yeah, be a console? Yeah, I think there's some way, some way, shape, or form there's going to be a console. I know it might be smaller, it might be just a plug-in, but it's still a console. It's, it's got to be smaller, hasn't it? I, I still yeah. don't really understand why the PlayStation is so big. It just makes no sense. Mm. I know, it is surprising that as technology advances, the, whenever you bring out new technology, it seems to be bigger and bigger in consoles, which is a bit strange. Mm. Um, it's weird. But hopefully they'll get it down. But we'll definitely be around. There will always be consoles. Until we're all dead. <laughs> then... <laughs> Until the sun explodes and kills us all. Yeah. I mean, my only, ca- my only sort of counter-argument is there is an aim to kind of... There has been a ch- talk about trying to get rid of them. Yeah, they tried to. Yeah, and it's, yeah. like you said, 10 years is such a long time of, like, you could, you know, the way we move forward now and stuff. And thinking back into 2013, even about some of the stuff that we've got now, and okay, maybe wouldn't have imagined has it, that. Has it changed that much? I think it has. I think I think on a very small thing. I think wrong. yeah. I think cloud gaming. I think the Game Pass the subscription. I don't think that would have been a, a thing that we were thinking about back then. I, I we were I thinking think about we were trading and... games. We weren't buying digitally like, as much as we were. Even though like Xbox One was all about trying to get you to do digital. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it, our, our way of do, a way of yeah of consuming games has changed. I think yeah. Sorry, John. Yeah, just going to say controversially, I I think it will all be like Game Pass. I can't see any reason why anybody would want to buy a game when you can just pay for a subscription. Do it that way. And mm-hmm. like going back to PSVR again, if there's a trial there, even more. Why 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 buy a game? Yeah, I think it's just how it how that works for developers, isn't it? I think that's the key thing, isn't it? We're not 100% convinced about how that works. It works really well for some people. It depends how much money they need. Make, I think the indies... Game, then. Yeah, I think the indies, were, I think the indies work well. Don't, don't make remoteness. <laughs> oh. oh, don't say that, Neil. I haven't reviewed it yet. Poor remoteness. We're, we're going to give it a fair go. Um, Are we tagging the developers? But don't tag it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> stop it. I think we need to. No, yeah. stop it. They've worked hard on that. <laughs> um, right. Good. Okay. That was a little brief chat about that. We're going to go now. We're going to leave. Uh, what are we looking forward to next week before we go? James, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to a bit of football at the weekend. Mm-hmm. The Wellington Cup final. United versus Newcastle. Is that what it's called now? The Wellington Cup final? I didn't even realise that. No. Oh. No, that was about 20 years ago. Okay, good. It's still the Wellington Cup to me. Okay, good. Is it the Milk Cup? Milk Cup, yeah. Oh, God, that's going back even further. <laughs> it is, it's about 40 years. Uh, 35, 40 years. 40 the years. Wellington yeah. Cup. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's on the weekend, good. All right, you, Paul? Um, I'm mainly looking forward next week to the release of the next Destiny 2 expansion, Lightfall, God, which comes cool? out on Tuesday. It's still going. Yes, it's still going. You've not spoken about this at all, Paul. I can't believe it. I haven't. I've been, I've been just, you know, biding my time. Um, (laughs) But yeah, daily texts that I've been getting. (laughs) Have you got, have you got a review code yet? Have you got a review code yet? Have you got the review? Have you got the review code yet? (laughs) Wow. Um, He doesn't. He doesn't get any good games. (laughs) No. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Yeah. We've been going on about this since last October. Yeah. Um, This time. I feel like this is a character stuff. <laughs> I need HR. Um, yeah, good. Well, that's still going. What about you, Neil? What have you got? 
Um, I've got a little bit of football as well. Uh, I spoke about going to Leeds last week, but I'm actually going to Leeds this week now. Mm. Um, so we've got the Leeds game. I've then got Drive to Survive, which hits Netflix uh, tomorrow or today or yesterday, whenever you're listening to this. Uh, that's going to be good. And I'm very much looking forward to the next episode of Last of Us as well. Oh, I, don't say anything. I didn't see last week. So, I've yeah. really got into that. Yeah. And I think it is really good. Yeah, and can I just good. say, I very rarely do I watch something and think, oh, that person's a really good actor. But um, what's the girl's name? Ellie? Yeah, yeah Ellie. The Belly. Bella oh, she's, she's a good she's, actor. She's very good, isn't she? Yeah. 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 I yeah. Think she's very good. But yeah, I've got really into that. Uh, the first couple, I wasn't really really taken by, but no, really good. Yeah, no, it's very, very good. Play um, the game next. Yeah, do that. Yeah, go there. I wouldn't bother. It's very good. Don't I, listen, I know to, what happens. Don't listen to it's these two. Rubbish. Don't listen it's to Paul. Paul's terrible. He's got no idea. Um, is it the, VR? Yes. No, it isn't. No, it's not. It's just in dreadful, boring own vision. Um, I'm looking forward to kind of right now. There's a state of play coming up tonight for PlayStation that we're not going to cover. We'll probably talk about it next week a little bit. Um, I'm interested in seeing... It's coming out tonight. We're recording on Thursday, so we're a bit late for that. But I'm sort of interested. I'm going to show 15 minutes of um, the Suicide Squad game that, mm. <laughs> that has turned... People have really turned against now. So I think it's quite... Because of their um, life service. It's a weird thing. thing to put a phone to. It's data play. Yeah, I mean, because it's not, it's not, it's not a PlayStation only game, is it? It's an Xbox. No. Yeah, so it's a weird no. one, is it? Yeah. Are they going to show Skull and Bones as well? <laughs> yeah. Can I just ask? Was that that's the one that was um, announced alongside Gotham Knights, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And Suicide Squad was the one that everybody's really excited about. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That looks so a lot better. Why? Why do they not want it now? Because there was a leak that came. You know, it was a leak. They showed a, a kind of clip, and I think it was PlayStation the thing. And people, they had the menus, and people saw that it had battle passes and live service kind of requirements, customization. So uh, I think people were kind of seeing. I think people were thinking, "Oh, is this a kind of like?" Uh, either a co-op, a co-op um, adventure, you know, like a story-driven adventure with these characters, which it probably still is, or a single person. But is or is it going to be much like the Avengers game? That's uh-huh. the worry. I think what people are sort mm-hmm. of assuming at the moment it's going to go down that route, which isn't a good route, where you're just sort of like fighting loads of same enemies and leveling it up, and you know, saving up to get a bloody different skin and all that stuff. You know, if you're from Harley Quinn or something. So. Yeah, I think there's that kind of... I think there's that at this point. Let's be fair, we don't know. We don't know yet. So maybe we'll know a bit more tonight. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, or maybe we won't care. We won't really care. Yes. James, did you see that the fella that did the... Sorry, the fella that did the Avengers, what well, I can't remember which what role he had in it, but he actually came out and apologised for the way the game yeah, um, yeah. ended up. Yeah, I know. I thought it was quite a brave move, yeah. so... I got respect for him for doing that. Yeah, it was fine that game. It was fine. It, wasn't it was good. all right. I yeah, I enjoyed myself. Yeah. Um, okay, we're well, gonna go. Um, Neil, where can we find you? We want to f- talk to you about the PSVR um, two. Talk to me on the Xbox Hub <laughs> social channels: Instagram, yes. Twitter, Facebook at the Xbox Hub. Do Great. that. Okay, I'll do that. Um, what about you, Paul? Yeah. Uh, I am on the Twitter, and my handle is at Xbox Hub Paul. Good. James, what about you? I'm on Twitter and Instagram. My tag is at LKJKO. Oh, that's very professional, kid. I like that. Very cool. It's like he's reading yeah. it. Or I know, it's it really is. precise. Yeah, Do you think he's got his notes every week? He just brings up his notes. Oh, where's my Instagram handle? Here it is. Sorry, tag. <laughs> tag. It's tag. Not a handle, it's tag. tag. Yeah. <laughs> he's not cool enough to have a tag. Yeah, it was great. It's like he was doing the end of a sign off of like, a really important meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for your yeah. time. Thank you very yeah, much. I will. I'll get some tips for that. Thank you. Um, right, and I've been GP Bradley, and you can find me at um, many places. But we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. You had to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook.